Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. One of my best friends died many years ago. I taught him how to stand on the promises of God. He is a medical doctor, wonderful family, young, everything to live for. He got cancer. He was sure that he would live. I was sure that he would live. But he died. And I have to tell you, it, because of where I am in God, it shook me a little, but I went on. But many people have a situation like that, and it shakes them a lot, and they don't go on with God. If I had only had supernatural understanding of the circumstances, I had natural understanding of the circumstances. My guest is going to teach you how to have supernatural understanding of all circumstances, and it's going to change and revolutionize your walk with God. Are you ready for the keys? Yes. You know, Shane, you were really a miracle child. His parents were told they couldn't have children. But 10 years later, you come along. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I, uh, Shane, uh, you really are provoking me to jealousy. At age five, I knew nothing from nothing. And you're seeing angels. Tell me about that. Exactly, Sid. I was in my kindergarten class, and we had a coloring assignment. And so we were just coloring. And we were at these round tables, and my friend across from me, I just happened to look up at him, and two angels were suspended above him. Now, I looked around at the students who were just uh, looking around, and no one else seemed to see the angels. So I saw them, and one in particular, I just stared in his eyes, and he just stared back at me. I didn't know exactly what to how do. does a five-year-old handle something like that? I, they didn't. I don't know how, how a 75-year-old handles <laughs> something like that. <laughs> well, they didn't scare me, but they did surprise me. And, you know, as, as children, we're told fairy tale stories and things of that nature. So to see something like that, I guess that was kind of prepared. And my older sister would always teach us about the Bible and Bible stories. But it's something about that friend. I didn't see him anymore after that day. The only thing we were told was he and his family had to go out of town and they never came back. So I knew those angels were there for a particular purpose. And I also know that God used that experience to build my faith, even at that age, because he was about to use me in the supernatural. Well, you uh, as a young child, you love Jesus. Yes. As a matter of fact, as you got a little older, you're still in school. Right. Uh, they, the kids used to uh, call you names. They used to call you Little Jesus. <laughs> yeah, Jesus Jr. And, and uh, evidently, <laughs> one, one of the kids really didn't like that, and uh, he came at you with a knife. Oh, what happened? He did. Said there was this kid. We had just finished PE, physical education. I changed out of my workout clothes, changed back into my regular school clothes, and I was just facing my locker. I was just closing up my locker when this guy yelled out my name. And so I turned around. And there he is now. He's a lot muscular, much more muscular than I am. And he had a knife pointing at me. I never experienced this in my life. So I'm standing there and he points this knife at me and he says, stop, stop talking, talking about, about Jesus, Jesus to everybody. everybody, literally. And so I'm standing there and the other guys in there looking at me to see what is he going to say or do. Right. I'm looking at me, what am I going to say or do? <laughs> but the Holy Spirit spoke to me, and he told me what to do, and I did it verbatim. He said, turn back around to your locker. Get out the little New Testament. You know the little New Testaments? Get that little New Testament out. And right between you and this guy, throw it on the floor, point to it, and say, cross it. And that's what I did. Scared as I don't know what. <laughs> I said, what if this guy crosses this Bible? I said, cross it. 
You, know, you put yourself in that situation. <laughs> so I looked at him, said he looked at the Bible. Then he looked at me. Then he looked above me, behind me. And his mouth dropped open and his eyes got big. I knew he wasn't afraid of me, so I didn't know what was happening. So when I looked behind me, there was a warring angel between me wow. and my locker oh. right behind me. No one else in there saw it. He looked at me and he got out of there. All of the other fellows who, were, who was there in the locker room, they thought he was afraid of the Bible. <laughs> he got out of there. And, and you know, Sid, again, God used that to help build my faith, to know that the angels are always with us. We have nothing to fear. We may not see them, but they are there on God's assignment to protect his own. Now, you have a, a seer gift. You see angels. Yes. I'm just curious. I know you see angels when uh, you're speaking at your congregation. Yes. But do you ever see angels in a restaurant uh, when you're walking down the street? I do. I do. I see them sometimes behind people. Uh, there's... Uh, excuse me. When, he, when I did a radio show, <laughs> guess what happened? He saw an angel and described it to me standing behind me. But his wife happens to be an artist. Yes. And she, he described what he saw, and that painting, she painted it for me, it's, it's, it's in my office, and I really value that. But I, how big was that angel? He was about 9 to 10 feet tall, and he was standing at attention, he's there now, standing oh. at attention <laughs> behind you. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and... He's wearing the same exact thing that he had then. It's this blue cord that he's using for a belt. And off of his shoulders are these blue fringes. And at that point, he was looking straight up, just like this, as if he was waiting for a cue or a command. And the Holy Spirit said to me, he's protecting Sid, which I told my wife, this has to be the title of this painting, Protecting Sid. Oh, I love it. But Glory to God. Glory to God. Yeah, you're learning a lot about angels. For instance, yes. when you're speaking and you see angels start really flapping their oh. wings a lot, what does that mean to you? That started happening years ago, Sid. When, when I'm preaching in different services or conferences, they line up in the back of the room, shoulder to shoulder, while I'm preaching. And the first time, I didn't know what in the world was going on. They started flapping their wings. The best way I can describe it is violently. I mean, just flapping, flapping, flapping. And so inside, I asked the Holy Spirit, what's going on? And then he taught me, anytime you see that, stop what you're doing. Go straight into ministering in the spirit, in which I always start with an altar call for salvation, because salvation is the greatest miracle. And if you start with the greatest miracle, any other miracle is easy. So I did that. And then I asked for those who needed prayer. This woman came up, Sid, who said to me, I have this knot on my side and it's been bothering me. So out of courtesy, I asked another sister in the church. I said, would you put your hand on her side? And then I put my hand on top of hers and I prayed. Later, the lady told me that the knot got larger. <laughs> and... I said, got larger. So again, I'm, that's not what you're looking, that's not what you're really <laughs> no, looking no, no, for no. at all. And then she told me, she said, let me tell you the whole story. I went to the doctor because it really, really started bothering me. And the doctor did a biopsy on it, found out it was cancer in there. This is what God did. Further examination proved that whenever it got larger, God created this strong tissue that surrounded the cancer. <laughs> the doctor asked the lady, how long did you have this? And when she told him, the doctor says, no way, you'd be dead by now if you had this that long. But when she examined all of that tissue surrounded and literally secluded that cancer, it couldn't go anywhere. They went in, got it. She's been symptom free, cancer free for years. <laughs> that is wonderful. You know. I, I hear about the gift you had since you were five, and yeah, you, know, you really provoked me and a lot of our viewers to jealousy. Yeah. But 
Can everyone see into the invisible world like that? Yes, everyone. Everyone can see into the invisible world because of the fact that the Lord said something to me. You know, he he rebuked me. The Holy Spirit rebuked me because when I'm ministering, sometimes there are people in the audience who are not used to that particular type of gifting. So I like to say, you know, I have a gift to see angels because I'm about to tell them the angel or angels that I see. So I say I have a gift to see angels. And one day I was in the bathroom brushing my teeth and the Holy Spirit showed me a vision of myself saying that to an audience. And he said to me, don't say you have a gift to see angels. You don't have a gift. You have an ability to see angels. And when you have an ability, I want you to teach that ability Mm. to others. And this is what he said to me. Teaching transfers ability from one person to another. Then someone asked me, said, you can really teach people how to see angelic activity, angels, I asked them, I said, well, do you know about or have you ever heard of Satan worshipers? They said, yeah, of course. Do do you believe that they teach their pupils, their mentees, how to see in the spirit realm? Oh, yes, they see demons and all kind of things. So you mean to tell me that our father, God Almighty, who created the supernatural realm, will allow Satan worshipers to benefit from seeing and experiencing the supernatural realm, but We can't teach that particular ability? Oh, yes, we can. Why? Because, number one, I teach on dimensions above what they can teach because, as you said, we are seated in heavenly places. They can't get to where we are. When I teach on seeing in the supernatural, I'm teaching from where I'm sitting, right there by my big brother, Yeshua. I'll tell you you what. I would like you to teach keys. Mm to understanding this realm of understanding, not natural, but supernatural understanding. Be right back. (laughs) This understanding, I have never heard a message, a sermon on understanding, yet you told me, you researched it. How many times is understanding in the Bible? Over 300 times, Sid. More than grace? More than belief? More than all these things that we hear messages on. Exactly. And, And God focuses on understanding because whatever God says is the understanding. Where we come into fault is whenever God speaks to us and then we say, Hmm, okay, I hear what you're saying. Now, how can I do? We begin to lean to our own understanding. And the Word of God says, lean not to your own understanding. Whatever God has spoken, He has already put all the thought needed into what He has said. Give give me your best definition of understanding. Understanding, Sid, is revealed insight. Only God can reveal it. And that's what makes understanding supernatural. That's why God said it. All thy getting, get understanding. Excuse me. There's something that jumped out at me when you Mm. said that. Do you know what God says? Not in some of your getting. (laughs) In all of your getting. Yes. Get understanding. How do you pray for understanding? How do you recommend we pray for understanding? Oh, Sid. Just as Jesus taught us in Matthew 6, when he taught us how to pray, he said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done before give us this day our daily bread. So we have to ask the father. Here's the situation. Ask the father, how do you want to handle this? What is your understanding of this situation? I want to see what you see. Once we get his will on earth, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, then we know what to ask for, that daily bread. So I need your understanding so I know how to pray. So that is how we get understanding. And you know what, Sid? We never have to ask God, will you give me understanding? I've searched the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Everyone who got understanding, they literally requested it. They said, give me understanding, the word of God, give me understanding and I shall keep thy law. Yea, I shall observe it with my whole heart. I cannot keep nor observe your law 
until I get your understanding. I can't minister in the gifts of the Spirit until I get your understanding. I can't have a successful marriage until I get your understanding. My business will fail, Father, if I don't get your understanding, which is the key and is the attraction to all success. You know, people use the natural and they think they're using the supernatural, but the natural is confined to the limited thinking we have, That's whereas right. the supernatural, there's no <laughs> limit to what God has knowledge of. Amen. You know, I mean, why would you want to deal with this amount of knowledge when you can deal with this amount of knowledge? Exactly. Sid, the Holy Spirit taught me years ago, God is only responsible for one thing and one thing only, his word. What do you say is ultimate success? Sid, ultimate success is when we fulfill God's original intent for our lives. There, there is, uh, you say there is an attractiveness, even a favor, when we grasp supernatural understanding. Explain. Exactly. Because what happens is whenever... Let's say you go to look for a job. When you look for a job, a lot of people are attracted to the big titles, the big salaries, uh, the big corner office. They want all of these things. They're attracted to those jobs. But what attracts the jobs to us? God himself said, if you get the understanding, that's why he says, and all that getting, get understanding. Success is attracted to it. The job title is attracted to it. It's attached to it. The wealth is attached give, to give it. Give me a few keys. Oh, the keys. You know, when Jesus said to Peter, after he asked his disciples, who do men say that I am? Then who do you say that I am? And then uh, Peter himself said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Then Jesus said, I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom. But Sid, I couldn't find anywhere in the word of God where Jesus literally gave Peter the keys. I wanted them so I could have sure. that power. He said, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, loosed on earth, loosed in heaven. So the Holy Spirit said to me, get a chronological Bible and write where Jesus gave Peter that promise. I want you to find every time Jesus said something or something was referred to Peter from that point on in the presence of Jesus. And I'll show you keys. Said I found 10 keys, 10 keys of the kingdom. And one of the keys happened whenever they were on Mount Transfiguration. And Peter, James and John was so afraid. Peter was so afraid. The Bible says he didn't know what else to say. So he said, let, let us make tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. And a, a cloud overshadowed them. And a voice came out of the cloud and says, this is my son. Hear him. The Holy Spirit said to me, this is one of the keys of the kingdom that you need to know. Don't fear here. Many times we face situations and immediately we fear. No, no, don't fear here. Hear what I am saying to you. Another time occurred when Jesus was approached by the one and only Peter. And you know what he said? Um, Jesus, evidently somebody did something to him. How often am I supposed to forgive my brother? Seven times. Jesus said, no, 70 times seven. That was a key right there. The Holy Spirit said to me, another key of the kingdom that will give you power is unforgiveness is illegal for you and everyone else. Then he further taught me, you must forgive on contact. Right at the instance of the offense, you have to forgive. Live a life of forgiveness. There are a total of 10 keys that if we live this life, we will have power. Do you remember when Peter went up with John to the temple and there was a lame man there? And long story short, uh, he said, look on us. So he looked to receive something and he said, silver and gold, have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. What did he have? The keys. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the man rose up and he walked that's the power that we can have when we take the keys of the kingdom of heaven, which is literally said the understanding of heaven's culture. I'll tell you what, I need you to pray right now for supernatural understanding for our viewers. Would you do that? I promise. Father, I just thank you by Yeshua 
We thank you, Father God, for this opportunity right now. And I speak to every human spirit by the power of God. And I thank you, Lord God, for releasing understanding right now, revealing insight to everyone watching, everyone listening. And I apply the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that would dare, dare, dare come every foul force that would dare come against it. The blood of Jesus prevails right now. And Father, I thank you that not only do they receive understanding, but the power that comes with the understanding. Thank you, Lord God, that even as the spiritual realm does not open to us, but we must open up to the supernatural realm. Father God, I pray for that release right now, that they would open up to the supernatural realm to see what is to happen, to see what you're seeing, to hear as you want us to hear right now in the mighty and matchless name of Yeshua. It is so. It is so. Amen. Hallelujah. And the Messiah said, it is finished. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen.